Well, what's the next problem that we've got? Well, we see in color. So we're missing some stuff from our photograph here. We'd much rather be able to, we, you know, we can go back to the engineers and say, well, this is really great. There's all kinds of stuff we can do with just these. But, you know, we're not able to record color. Can you come up with some way to record color? And there is. This is the next kind of resolution. This is called, uh, number three here, is called spectral resolution. Spectral resolution. And so if you're thinking about your, our black and white, and you're thinking about the spectrum in general, an electromagnetic radiation, you know, we've got, I, I'm not going to pull down the screen and, and pull up Google Images at the moment, but you know, everybody has seen diagrams of the spectrum. And you know that. Uh, where, you know, wherever we are, that there's a relatively thin amount of the spectrum that we see anyway. You know, this right here is, uh, just for the sake of example, we'll say this right here is the visible light that we see. No, but then you go further this way and you get into ultraviolet light. And then over here is infrared and then you, as you start to move further, you get into microwaves and radio waves and so forth. And thank goodness that we don't see that because we, we would be overwhelmed. I mean, we see a very narrow band, but of course there's also radio waves and microwaves and ultra flying around in here, but our eyes don't see them. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't design some other sensor to see them. And in fact, that's what we do. But importantly, let's zero in on just visible light. Uh, so, you know, let's, uh, to continue the camera analogy, let's just take this relatively small bit of the spectrum and say here is visible light. And of course, over here, uh, see, we have, so red light over here, right? Uh, blue, uh, light, right, you know, and then we're passing through yellow, you know, we're passing through the color spectrum right over here, Roy G. Biv, you know, all the way from blue and purple into ultraviolet over here to red, and then you pass into infrared, right? Now you've got the whole, you know, you think of the, uh, uh, you know, a prism breaking down light inside and you're seeing all of the colors. Well, what is this system that we're talking about over here doing? Well, you've got some patch of ground that's got some spatial resolution. All of this stuff from the spectrum is falling onto this piece of ground and then bouncing up into the satellite. But the satellite can't distinguish between red light, yellow light, orange light, red light, anything like that. All it's doing is returning you a value between 0 and 255, in this case, if that's its radiometric resolution, and saying, hey, you know what, all of the, the bouncing, it's, going back, it's returning a value of 102, let's say. That's what's generating black and white. Because you can definitely think of, uh, and you probably had a situation similar to this, I mean it could be that inside the visible spectrum you're looking at a red object, we've got no blue, uh, you know, or green light uh, reflecting off of this object, but then when I get over here to red, I've got a huge amount of red. Or I could be looking at uh, you know, a blue object, and there's no light reflecting over here. But when I get over here to blue, there's a huge amount of blue. And if I have blue reflecting at you know, this intensity, and I have red light reflecting at the same intensity, maybe they're both reflecting at the intensity of 102. And so the sensor system just returns 102. It doesn't care what color light that was in there. It just says, of all the light I got, it's 102 value. Uh, so what we do then is increase spectral resolution. We go back to the engineering team and we say, look, your, your system you know, is capturing this right here and assigning me one value. 
But what if I really want to know whether it's reflecting in blue or whether it's reflecting in green or whether it's reflecting in red? You say, I want to design a new system that's only looking at the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation between here and here. And now give me some value based on that reflectivity. And then look over here in like green and tell me its reflectivity. And give me its reflectivity over here in red. So it says, I don't want one value. Let's design the system so that it can look at a very, very thin slice of the spectrum. And then it might return, well, I've got, if it's pure red, I got no blue reflectivity. I got no green reflectivity. And I got 102 worth of red reflectivity. Then you'd be able to tell, oh, it's a red object. Now the problem that we have there, I mean, this is what goes on, but in rasters, remember, one of the key elements of all the rasters is that you are given only one value per cell. A raster can only have one value per cell. But now here I'm asking for three different values for each individual cell. How do we do that? Well, you can't put three values into a raster. So what they do is give you multiple rasters. This is also why a remote sensing data set can start to explode in size. Because if you have a, radio, a spectral resolution that will report uh, blue, red, and green light reflectivity, you'll get three whole rasters. And rasters can be rather large anyway. that are all geo-referenced on top of one another. One of them will contain all the red values. One of them will contain all the blue values. One of them will contain all the green values. Okay. And the terminology for this is bands. If you're looking up satellite imagery, how many bands does a satellite imagery have? Well, what it's talking about when it's talking about different bands is spectra, you know, how many, how many different rasters is it going to give you? How finely can that system chop up this spectrum in order to return values to you? Uh, we're going to talk more about this, uh, this particular thing in the next class, but let me give you, and I think the last two minutes, because it is quick, let me give you the fourth kind of resolution, and then we'll talk a lot about what you do with this next class. Just for the sake of rounding things out, though, the last kind of resolution is temporal resolution. And this is also reported for each one. To continue the um, photograph analogy, you know, uh, lots of people I've seen, you know, their parents have that frame up on, you know, if I take one picture of you, okay, I've got one picture of you, but there's additional information I can have about you, which is how you change over time. Sometimes parents will have the frame where you put one picture of your kid, you know, one school picture, you know, every year. Okay, well, that's continuing that. They're increasing the temporal resolution of the information they've got on you. They have not only have one picture that's got high spatial radiometric and spectral resolution, but they've got a temporal resolution of one year on you, so they can determine change through time. If I were to take a picture and I said, hey, give me, say, 30 pictures a second, well, then I've got basically video, right? I'm you know, keeping also a temporal log on this. In terms of satellite imagery, though, you're talking about once a satellite goes over a particular area, how long will it be before the satellite can image that same location? Depending on its orbit, depending on a lot of different characteristics, satellites will be in situations where sometimes they can rather rapidly image the same area again, or sometimes it can be a, a rather long time before the satellite gets back to that particular area. Depending on what you're using this imagery for, you may, uh, a, a lower temporal resolution may be fine, otherwise you might have to have a higher temporal resolution. Think about a situation like a natural disaster. You know, if something, a, a hurricane comes through, or a tornado, or uh, an earthquake, you have an image of what the area looked like before, you're trying to do some disaster response. I, you know, I had one image of it, how long is it going to be before the satellite can come back over and re-image so I can do a comparison? That's temporal resolution. So in all of this, we talk about spatial, radiometric, spectral, and temporal. And this is one of the big keys here in remote sensing. And we'll talk more about that next class. Have a fantastic day.